So I mean, like, what kind of leeway? Can just lean, uh, you know, some more of a pacer. All right, listen, I want to introduce uh, Chef Joseph Cote. Or Cody. Or Cody. It's, got, it's like Chef Shane or Chef Bradford. Um, a chef who can cook whatever you need, whenever you need it. Um, he's going to give us about 10 or 15 minutes of, like, what his story is. However you want to see it. I'm going to ask you one question at the end. The one at the end? Yeah. You want to start off with anything? Yeah. I'll start you off with a question. Yeah, okay. What's the worst thing you ever dropped? Worst thing I ever dropped? Yeah. Oh, that's easy, man. That, okay, it wasn't a drop. I'm going to step back. So, Here we go. I'm Joseph Cope. I actually was at this school 40 years ago. I walked in. Seriously, it hasn't changed. I mean, seriously, they put a little bit of paint up. I didn't realize that, like, I mean, those ramps are really steep. Um, so, uh, worst thing I ever dropped. There is a, uh, a device in cooking that's about, I don't know, probably 100 gallons, and make about 100 gallons of marinara all at once. But if you leave the spigot open, oh. it all falls out on the floor. You would not believe. Actually, like 100 gallons of marinara fills this entire floor. And to try and get it done and cleaned up before your boss gets back and knows that you're there, like wasting it, some supreme effort, but I was able to hide the evidence and just I wondered why there was so many cans of like tomatoes missing. So, <laughs> good one. I consider that a drop. It's a drop. So, uh, Chef Shane asked me to come and speak to you guys, which I know is super exciting for you. It's really exciting for me. <laughs> Round of applause. Come on, let's hear it. Come on. No, it, it is really a treat to come and talk about me. So I'm gonna do that. So uh, I know Chef Shane from so many years of climbing. Did you know that your uh, your chef is an amazing mountaineer, mountain climber? Like thousands of feet off the deck. Not so much. Clinging on ice, rock. Ice, rock, whatever you got. Whatever you got. Like, oh my goodness gracious. Okay, <laughs> those are some great stories too, but I'm gonna stick with cooking. Um, so yeah, Chef Shane is an awesome, Amazing climber. You should uh, ask him about my mountaineering. That's what was chefing. So, uh, what I came here, I guess, to talk about was my career in the culinary arts, where I started and such. Um, I started cooking probably when I was like 10 because I was curious, I was interested. Julia Childs was big then. Do you guys know who Julia Childs is? Was you've heard the name? Maybe you have. She was the first one of the first TV chefs. Yeah, she was one of the first TV chefs. Funny accent, you should totally YouTube her. It is so funny. Google Julia Child's bleeding. Yes. Um, yeah, she cut her finger once, it's, it's hilarious. Um, and just that curiosity led me into just starting out in restaurants and cooking, washing dishes. Um, working at a place called Perkins, which was like uh, basically a Denny's IHOP maybe. I'm trying to get like current here. Exactly. You know, making eggs and breakfast and such. Um, and was always just curious in cooking. What happened is, all right, sorry, I'm gonna digress again. I currently live with my first, in the same complex with my first chef, Chef Bob Sampson, amazing chef, CIA, Vietnam vet, pretty awesome guy, um, who actually took me through as an apprentice, you know, apprentice chef, uh, which is an amazing opportunity. Anytime you have an interest in something and you can find a mentor, somebody who knows what they're doing, is impressive in what they do and wants to help you realize, I don't know, your curiosity, your potential, your skills, man, take it. Because um, working with Chef Samson, Bob, uh, working with Bob, that's where I started to get my actual education in cooking and realized what a broad, broad field I had entered and such. Going through, I'm sure Chef Shane has taken you guys through a lot of the basics, um, method, ingredients, um, the hows and whys of cooking, you know, and for myself, getting that firm base, and then from there, learning the amazing things I could do with food. Um, I thought about listing off a bunch of things that I've made, just everything, right? And for years, I was able to follow that passion, get better and better at what I was doing. Um, incredibly versatile skill. You're gonna eat every day of your life if everything goes right, okay? Something's <coughs> probably gone wrong if you're not eating for a day. Or you're gonna get a scope or something. But generally, you're gonna to have to eat every day. So knowing how to cook and knowing how to cook well is not only impressive, but it makes just eating that much more fun. Um, I don't know, bouncing around. So you know, my career in cooking led me to go to different kitchens, different uh, cuisines, different cities, um, different venues from like restaurants to catering to 
being a personal chef as well. Um, and in that, also I, okay, this might not sound relevant at all, but I learned about like, you know, basically working with people, you know, how to, how to work a team, how to be part of a team, how to manage different priorities and such. Um, eventually I found myself like, you know, running larger kitchens. I ran, I hired Chef Shane when I really needed some help. Um, if I can oh, interrupt here. Yeah. You were really good at organizing people in a really wonderfully friendly way. Yeah. And it was very, very effective. The other version of chefs is the yelling mean guy chef, which is not as effective. So. Mm -hmm. It is not as effective. It is, uh, so if anyone ever yells at you in a kitchen, let's say you're cooking, um, you can split. <laughs> you know, or, or you can stay, either way. Um, but yeah, how do you, how do you help, and quite frankly, how do you lead people? How do you organize people to kind of work together, work in concert, and produce an amazing product over and over again, right? And that's, that's all, like you see, uh, what's the guy's name? Help me out. Gordon Ramsay, maybe? Yeah. yeah. What a mean man. There we go. Uh, you know, in terms of how he drives stuff and all these things. But that is to an end. He is trying to take a bunch of people that don't care as much as he does, that don't have the skills he does, and train them up so they, at the end of the day, the person who receives that meal and receives that product, I'm gonna kind of make it very generic, at the end of it, is amazed, right? And there's a bunch of different ways to do that. And anything you're gonna do in your professional lives is gonna be either being a part of a team, helping organize a team, to bring it down to an end user, right? And want to have that experience be amazing or so satisfactory they don't even notice you're there, right? And how do you do that? And how do you do that so you don't drive people nuts? Uh, why if you're not a Gordon Ramsay or someone that's being abused by a Gordon Ramsay, right? These skills take time. Um, that whole, if you're passionate about what you're doing um, and you really want to, basically, whatever you're producing, whether it's an amazing dish, um, or whether that's, I don't know, some software product, <clears throat> can't even think right now. If you're creating an app or something, you want the user at the very least to not feel that friction, and you know, hopefully you want them to be amazed. And that takes like bringing a whole bunch of people pulling together. And that's what I learned in kitchens, in cooking. <clears throat> I still cook and investigate today. Uh, spent last weekend, oh, putting down the best dog in the world, but also doing some amazing cooking. I know Henry, freaking awesome guy. Oh, I miss him dearly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but also that, that same weekend, making um, Japanese fried chicken. Working with uh, Koji Rice. You ever heard of Koji Rice, you guys? Probably not. They, have, they may not have. They might not have. Koji Rice. It's a um, kind of like rice yogurt. Best thing to say, it's a cultured rice. You let it sit in water for a week. It gets kind of blue cheesy rice. I don't know what else to say. But you coat the, yeah, right. It gets a little funky. Um, gives us amazing umami flavor, and you wash it off, you know, roll it in some egg batter, deep fry it, and it's mind blowing. Yeah, so good. That's what I do with my weekends a lot of times. You know, or make uh, amazing ciabatta bread, just because I want it, and because I can, because I have the confidence to do that. Um, you know, and anything you choose, like whether that is, and this is a culinary class, but, this is a skill that will follow you throughout your lives, you know? Impress yourself, impress your people, and you get to eat well, you know? And develop those skills to lead people. So when I felt like I was wanted something different, um, because if you're lucky, number one, you'll be able to visit your school in 40 years and be like, wow, looks the same. Yeah, yeah that's success, by the way. So you went to the school? I did. I went to Fairview back in 1980. Three or four, it only lasted about a year. Yeah. The, uh, but I went, uh, so I started off with like, some curiosity around cooking, so, and I went and cooked for gosh, probably 15 years. I had a, had a child, and when my son was born, he, uh, he had a bunch of nurses around him, like helping him, you know, being born. I'm like, wow, that seems like a great job. And it's that agency that I learned from like success in culinary school, I was like, I'm gonna go be a nurse. Ended up being a hospice nurse for the next decade, which is the other end of things. I thought it was gonna be labor delivery. I was hospice for about a decade. Um, and again, how do you run a team? How do you get people to what the end product is was 
quite frankly, taking families through, uh, you know, intense experiences of like losing a loved one and helping to comfort people through that end. You know, a lot of, most of the skills I learned, I learned in kitchens and really stressful situations, right? And how do you deal with stressful situations and stay focused, right? Um, at the same time, do you guys, have you ever heard of like 2007, 2008, like the housing market fell apart, kind of like the Great Depression for a little mini one? Because they were just being born today. I know, I know. Now how old are you guys? 16. 16? 40? 40? 25. <laughs> but still, so, you missed that, but there was a, there was this uh, prevailing notion in the news like, hey, this stuff is so complicated and so hard to understand, we can't even explain it to you. And I find that irritating as a nurse, as a chef. And I got curious in finance. Now I run a, a bank branch. Um, moving out of that, as I went from like this like super meaningful career to my other super meaningful career. Uh, now I run a retail bank branch and sell money, right? Same thing. Like people are just as upset around money as they are around dying, you know? And that same, uh, that intimate sense and delivering something so you don't feel any friction. Like you ever had to, thought you had money, but you're unable to spend it? Did you find it frustrating? Like my debit card doesn't work, the checks how and stuff like that. People get irate over and over again. So I don't know if I really, uh, so I was like, I'm gonna talk about cooking, I'm gonna talk about teamwork, I'm gonna talk about skills. No, it's just great. Um, talk about my career journey. I think I might have one more career in myself. I'm gonna be 55 this year, and banking is awesome, and I'm just kinda wondering what's next from there. You got it. Well, listen, um, thanks for speaking. Um, I'm gonna maybe have some kids ask some questions, but first of all, let's hear a round of applause for uh, Coach Nate or Chef Joseph.